Hello everyone, this is Frank DeMora, and today is April 1st, 2015. And of course, I'm not going to be playing any jokes on you at all, because I believe that today's news is very, very important, and I don't want to have any jokes or trying to fool anyone. But today I'm going to be talking about something that I brought to your attention over the past six years. And I'm going to scroll down and bring you to a post of last year that I gave to you. And that post was from November the 23rd of 2014. And the title that I put to it, Another Big Earthquake Added to the 2014 List. Now I'm going to scroll down to the area that I'm talking about. And it has to do with this problem between Israel and Iran over the nuclear quest that Iran has to get a hold of a bomb to be used against Israel. And I've been warning for the past six years that Barack Hussein Obama was doing nothing to stop the Iranians from getting the bomb. All he was doing it was giving the Iranians more time. When the deadlines came, they extended the deadline and the talks continued, and he's been doing that for six years. And I've been warning every year since the beginning of these talks with Israel and Iran and the United States that he would continue to do the same thing. And we just saw, again, an example of what I've been warning about yesterday when the talks came to abrupt end and the Obama administration is giving, again, more time for Iran to comply, which they will never do. I'm going to play a clip for you from ABC News showing you what I'm talking about, how the Americans have again extended these talks. Nuclear negotiations with Iran are now in overtime. Talks between Iran and six world powers were supposed to end at midnight, but negotiators are still at it, trying to hammer out some kind of agreement. Hello everyone, I'm Ty Hernandez in New York. There's more than an initial accord is within reach, and the talks could be extended into the week. So let's go right to ABC's chief foreign correspondent, Terry Moran, in Lausanne, Switzerland, where the talks are taking place. Terry, what have you heard? Well, right now, uh, these talks are in a overtime, basically, and they're in a state of, of brinksmanship, of rumors and rumors of rumors. In other words, they're in an ordinary diplomatic endgame right now. They blew through that deadline of midnight last night that they had set for themselves last November to reach what was called a political framework of a deal. Uh, yesterday was just chaos in the hours leading up to it, and we are told that the American team heard directly from the president take a break, go to sleep, don't mind about the deadline, we'll come back and take a look today. And so today they've been in meetings all day, and, day and they'll, I'll believe it when I see it, uh, that at some point tonight the parties will come out with what they're calling a statement. So we went from a political framework to an agreement to an understanding, and now we're at a state, statement. Okay, so... Well, as close and close as they can call something a score. Terry, we, uh, we do know that some Republicans are against any deal with Iran. Would their resistance hinder an agreement if there is an agreement? You bet uh, that the Republican resistance to these talks and to any deal with Iran is a crucial piece uh, of this puzzle. That is why Secretary of State Kerry is in there right, truck, truck, something, whatever it's going to be, a, a statement, an agreement something he can bring back to Washington and say, look, we've got an Iran pinned down. They are going to bring their nuclear programs under strict international controls. The Iranians have of these talks in their country with an agreement that says, look, we've gotten something from the Americans. We're going to be out of the prison that they put us in. These crippling sanctions are going to be lifted. And, and right now they actually can't put those pieces together. So what statement of the goals that they have agreed on with all the really tough negotiations going forward until the next deadline, June 30th. And, and Terry, what what are, is Iran holding out for here? Has that changed since the talks have started? Well, no, the, the basic concept of this deal has been clear from the beginning. 
The United States uh, and the West and the international community actually wants Iran's nuclear programs brought under strict controls and limited credible, peaceful, civilian purposes. And Iran wants the sanctions lifted, those sanctions crippling their economy. They want to be integrated back into the world economy. And so that's the basic deal here. Now, as you get into the specific of the sanctions, should Iran, what kind of nuclear programs that will be for peaceful purposes, generating power, medical technology, what kind of programs will Iran still be allowed to have going forward all those, the devil is in the details thing, that, that basic concept, that's the deal that's on the table. All right, and even if we get an agreement, which we sound still far away from, we're promised a statement uh, at some point later today, but even if there is some sort of agreement, it's still only one step in ratifying such a thing. Precisely. The, this is a very complicated piece of diplomatic business because it's so highly technical. Uh, how many centrifuges should Iran have? Those centrifuges are, are useful in making a nuclear weapon and generating civilian power. How advanced should those centrifuges be? Uh, the timing of the lifting of the sanctions, inspection regimes, all those pieces have to fit together like a Rubik's Cube is the way the lead American negotiator has been talking about it. And finding that right combination is going to be the hard work ahead over the next several months. Okay, so I'm going to stop it there. So what we have is another extension to June 30th of 2015. And I can assure you when June 30th comes around that the Iranians will not stop their quest to get a hold of the bomb. It's not going to happen. And if anybody believes that, well, I have property in Florida that you can buy. Now, in my November the 23rd, 2015 post, this is what I wrote to you. There is another earthquake coming that I've been warning you about, and that is the coming conflict between Israel and Iran. For the past six years, I've been trying to get you to see God's word concerning the Ezekiel 38 war prophecy is heading toward us with great speed. Below, you will see some of my warnings knowing that President Obama will do nothing concrete to stop Iran's quest to get a nuclear bomb to be used against Israel, I have warned that Israel will have to take action against Iran to stop them from getting a device that would wipe out the state of Israel. And so now we're going to be going past this six-year mark that I've been warning you about the extensions, as you just saw from the ABC News. But there's more news to this story that is very, very important that you need to see some of the breaking news that I just learned from sources outside of the United States. Now, the Prime Minister of Israel, knowing that the United States, again, is giving more time, he had a statement to be giving, and you'll see the headline here, BB Blast Iran Talks After Iranian General Says Israel's Destruction Is Non-Negotiable. So keep in mind, Ezekiel chapter 38, the war against Israel, of which Iran will be playing a critical role in that war against that tiny nation. And of course, the Russians and the, the Turkish people and the, and the other nations mentioned in the Ezekiel war will be coming down with Iran, Turkey, and Russia, and the rest of the Muslims. So listen to what the Prime Minister of Israel has to say. Yesterday, an Iranian general brazenly declare, and I quote, Israel's destruction is non-negotiable. But evidently, giving Iran's murderous regime a clear path to the bomb is negotiable. This is unconscionable. I and of course, he's talking about the United States. And keep in mind, the United States right now is going head-to-head. -head. Obama's administration hates the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and he doesn't like his administration. And he's done everything in his power to try to dethrone the Prime Minister of Israel to no avail. I agree with those who have said that Iran's claim that its nuclear program is only for peaceful purposes doesn't square with Iran's insistence on keeping underground nuclear facilities, advanced centrifuges, 
and a heavy water reactor. Nor does it square with Iran's insistence on developing ICBMs and its refusal to come clean with the IEA on its past weaponization efforts. At the same time, Iran is accelerating its campaign of terror, subjugation, and conquest throughout the region, most recently in Yemen. The concessions offered to Iran in Luzon would ensure a bad deal that would endanger Israel, the Middle East, and the peace of the world. Now is the time for the international community to insist on a better deal. A better deal would significantly roll back Iran's nuclear infrastructure. A better deal would link the eventual lifting of the restrictions on Iran's nuclear program to a change in Iran's behavior. Iran must stop its aggression in the region, stop its terrorism throughout the world, and stop its threats to annihilate Israel. That should be non-negotiable, and that's the deal that the world powers must insist upon. Thank you. So there you have it. He knows what's going on. He's very aware of the threat to his nation from Iran. And now we learned also, let me show you. Now the news that came out yesterday from the Times in the Middle East, you'll see the headline, Iranian troops advance towards Israeli border. There's two things of importance here. Number one, extension of the nuclear talks. It weighs heavily on Israel. They're going to have to do something. Number two, we have the blood moon that is going to be coming up on April the 4th. And only God knows if something major will happen. Maybe even a war will begin. Only God knows. We'll just have to wait and see. But what we do know is the road is being paved for the next war. Now, while Iran continually gets these extensions, and the United States is in their back pocket, we see that the Iranians are moving closer and closer to Israel. And according to the article, it says Iran is close to putting its forces on Israel's northeast border for the first time as its allies crush rebel groups in the Golan Heights area of Syria. The prospect of Iranian troops being posted on the frontier that has been calm for decades is causing alarm in Israel and comes as international negotiations over Iran's nuclear ambitions near a climax. Iran will be so close to the Israelis that it will no longer need long-range missiles to hit them, set up Du Ali, a fighter with Lebanon's Iranian-backed Hezbollah organization who has served multiple combat tours in Syria. So maybe it's possible now that the Iranian leader, Ayatollah Khamenei, knows that Israel is going to make a move to send in those jets and to bomb the nuclear facilities. And maybe knowing this, he's moving his troops closer so that he can retaliate against Israel in the hopes that the bordering nations around Israel may also come to Iran's aid and retaliate, which would cause war. And it could end up fulfilling the Psalm 83 war. But only God knows if that's going to happen. But we do know that the times are very ominous for Israel. And we're not getting any help from the United States, which also makes sense if you know the Bible. In Zechariah chapter 12, verses 2 and 3, where the Lord shows us that all the people of the earth are going to be gathered against Israel in the last days. And so this would include the United States. Now I've warned you many, many times. You could Google Frank Tamora on this and just put Put down, Frank DeMora warns that Israel will attack Iran alone. They're going to have to make a move, and I think that they're going to have to make it soon, knowing that the United States and these other international countries are giving them more time to get their bombs. Now, I'm not sure if you saw this news yesterday, but look at this. The headline, McCain joins Bolton, invites Israel to bomb Iran. Articles say what? John McCain, Senator John McCain, took to the Senate floor last week to rail against peace talks with Iran. No surprise there, but McCain went beyond blasting the deal. He suggested a surprising and disturbing method of blowing up the talks. 
the Israelis will need to chart their own path of resistance, exactly what I've been saying, and the Iranian nuclear deal, they may have to go rogue. In other words, take it alone. Let's hope their warnings have not been bluffs. Israel survived its first 19 years without meaningful U.S. patronage. For now, all it has to do is get through the next 22, admittedly long months. And you can go and read the rest of the article, but the gist of this article is, you know, Israel is going to have to take action. Go ahead and bomb Iran because it seems like none of the other countries around the world have enough guts to actually physically do something to stop the nuclear proliferation in the Middle East. And if Iran gets that bomb, Iran will use that bomb. But there's something else of importance that came out that I want you to see. And before we get to this last video, I just want to make sure that you saw this article, Iran backs away from key detail in the nuclear deal. And of course, the talks have been going on in Switzerland. It says, with the negotiating deadline just two days away, and of course that is already passed now, Iranian officials on Sunday backed away from the critical element of the proposed nuclear agreement, saying they are no longer willing to ship their atomic fuel out of the country. For months, Iran tentatively agreed that it would send a large portion of its stockpile of uranium to Russia, where it would be accessible for use in any future weapons program. But on Sunday, Iran's deputy foreign minister made a surprise comment to Iranian reporters, ruling out an agreement that involved giving up a stockpile that Iran has spent years and billions of dollars to amass. In other words, during these talks, all of a sudden, they're changing, the shifting their role, shifting the things that they've been saying. They've been lying to the United States and the international community for years. And people have fallen for these lies. And, of course, time is running out. Time is definitely running out. So action is going to have to be needed. Now, as far as the bomb itself, let me go over to this other video that I was talking about. And I think that you're going to find this very, very interesting. Now, the video you're about to listen to was from Dennis Avi Lipkin. And I have posted his biography so that you could see who this man is. And he's from Jerusalem, and he's going to give you some great information from his wife, pertaining to the nuclear problem and the new information that his wife just received. Believe me, you're going to find it interesting. Watch the video. Below this video you're watching now. 